Welcome back. The International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea has ruled that the offshore region that has been a decade-long maritime dispute between Ghana and Ivory Coast belongs to Ghana. The tribunal has drawn an ocean boundary that gives Ghana most of the disputed territory. Tillow oil first pumped crude from Ghana's Jubilee oil field in 2010. Meanwhile, a Varian government has accepted the maritime boundary ruling, saying it's most important for the country to preserve good neighborly relations with Ghana. The judgment allows for a definite dem demarcation of the maritime boundary. And as efforts to bring peace in South Sudan continues, Chinese troops have been on the front line in restoring livelihoods and other amenities for the locals. One such project is the renovation of a school called Hope. This is one of the many undertakings by the Chinese peacekeepers in ensuring a sustainable life for locals in a country plagued by internal conflict. The troops contributed to the construction of the school, daunting, donating rather large amounts of stationery, including exercise books, pens, pencils and school bags. The school, which is located near the campsite of the United Nations Mission in the Republic of South Sudan, has seen intermittent wars over the past years. The wars have often left villagers starving and many children orphans. So this is the first time we have received donation like that. Nobody has given us donation like this in this school. This is the first time. We cannot forget Chinese peacekeepers. I'm very happy for that, for the donation we receive, and uh, because the Chinese are our good friend. And an Egyptian woman once believed to be the world's heaviest has died in the United Arab Emirates. Emin Ahmed Ab El Hati had traveled to India earlier this year for uh, babiatric waist loss surgery, where local media reported that she had lost more than 300 kilograms of her 500 kilograms. A hospital statement said 37 year old, uh, the 37 year old had died from complications from other health conditions such as heart disease and kidney dysfunction. Ms. Abed al Hati had been in the UAE capital of Abu Dhabi since May after being transferred following specialist surgery in Mumbai, India. She rose to the world's attention after an online campaign to help her. Biatric surgery is also known as weightless surgery is used as a last resort to treat people who are dangerous to obese, that is having a body max index of 40 or above or 35 plus other obesity related health conditions. Kenyan farmers in the Rift Valley region are investing in high value horticultural crops as part of plans to diversify in agriculture in the region. Peter Kimani started growing macadamia nuts in 1987 for export. He has now expanded his business to include a nursery that supplies farmers in the area with seedlings that mature faster and also give high yields. Peter Kimani is pruning macadamia trees at his farm in Kitali, Kenya's Rift Valley region. He is among a number of farmers here who have invested in horticultural crops that offer high returns. Kitale lies in Transanzoia County, a key agricultural zone traditionally known for producing staples like maize and wheat. Farmers like Kimani are now being urged to diversify. Kimani produces organic macadamia on his five-acre farm, where he also grows coffee. Macadamia does well in tropical climates and Kitale, which receives an average of 1,260 millimeters of rainfall annually and offers favorable weather conditions for the nuts to thrive. A mature tree yields about 70 kilograms of nuts on average per year. When harvested, each kilo sells for about one US dollar. This, this is the sixth year. I started harvesting last year. This year, as you can see, I'm expecting to harvest about, uh, about, about 10 kgs. It keeps on increasing. By the time it reaches the age of from 10 years, so it's able to give you at least 40 kgs onwards. The crop gives high returns and needs few inputs to grow. He also runs a nursery where he propagates seedlings for sale to other farmers. The seedlings go for about $3.50 each. The trees are able to give Kimani about 100 kilos of nuts every week. The ripe nuts that fall on the ground are gathered using a manual nut collector. Kimani sells his macadamias to nut processing companies after dehusking them. 
Farmers have been trained on how to create a sustainable market system around the nuts, from planting to pre-processing and marketing, to enable them to take advantage of growing export demand. We encourage farmers to diversify from the ordinary uh, cereals to into horticulture. And uh, we are emphasizing on high-value crops uh, and also crops that uh, take short at period to be able to mature. And because when they take shorter period to mature, they are able to sell uh, even three, up to three times even per year. Processors like Jungle Nuts now buy macadamia directly from farmers, cutting out brokers who were known to exploit poor farmers in the past. At the factory, workers select and crack the nuts to remove the kernels. The macadamia kernels are then inspected before being packaged for shipping abroad. Kenya is the world's fourth largest producer of macadamia after South Africa, Australia and America. South African artist Anthene Kuyuza uses fire to create distinct work. The South African artist does this by bringing his canvas so close to destruction, he creates vivid images that seem to carry an aura of mystery. Let's take a look. Ever since Anati Nkanyuza discovered he could play with fire to create art, it has become his favorite medium. Nkanyuza is a self-taught artist, having loved to draw since primary school. When he came across Fumage, a technique made popular by Australian artist Wolfgang Palin in the late 1930s, he said he knew it was the challenge he needed. This art medium creates impressions using the smoke of a candle on paper or canvas. I was just looking for something that would differentiate myself from other artists. So I take a lot of, and I, I find out a lot of things online, but I, I got a lot of interest in smoke art. Hence, I decided to try it out, and then since then, I've been doing it. Nkanyuza studio is located in the living room of his flat in Pretoria, South Africa. He moved here three years ago, looking for more opportunities and a more vibrant art scene than his hometown of Somo in Eastern Cape. Currently, Nkanyuza is working on a series of portraits. One is of South African anti apartheid activist Stephen Biko whose death in police custody in 1977 was a significant turning point in the fight against repressive government. My inspiration like, uh, in, in, art, like in doing art in general, it's the, I would say it's the ability to create. But uh, my, my artwork, the artworks that I, uh, like I create every day, they mostly influenced by women or African like, and social, Africa and social issues and other social issues that we faced with. And also it, depending on the emotions that I'm having at that time. Nkanyuza is currently studying civil engineering. He also started the LP's art gallery, which organizes pop-up exhibitions and art events around the country. Remarkable. Well, that's it on Network Africa. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.